the mysteries persist. Hidden beneath the surface and among ancient giant earthworks and mounds. From early explorers in the 1700s to archaeologists today, Ohio's Scioto River Valley remains at the center of unanswered questions. The Native American builders were among the ancestors of today's living tribes. They left an enduring earthen legacy unlike anything else in the ancient world or today's world. Enormous geometric earthworks were built along the Scioto River and its tributaries, often constructed on a grand scale with an intriguing degree of precision, many designed as combinations of giant geometric squares, circles, and octagons. Repeated over and over again, the geometry of the past is embedded in river valleys, terraces, and hilltops. Most amazing, the earthworks seem to adhere to a grand architectural design, the earthen signature of a bygone culture. Who were these ancient architects? Neither the Shawnee nor other tribes in the Ohio River Valley were actively building earthworks. So it was clear that the mounds and walls were built in the distant past. It wasn't until the relatively recent past that precise mapping and aerial imaging, combined with new technologies, allowed archaeologists to peer into the ground and into the past, uncovering another part of the long-hidden story left by Native Americans. Carbon-14 dating of some of the earliest earthwork features pushed the cultural time clock back to over 2,000 years ago. Ohio's ancient earth architects are known to archaeologists as the Hopewell culture. However, no one knows what these people may have called themselves. With no written language, much of their story remains wrapped in mystery. Unlike later cultures, there were no towns nor villages. The Hopewell people grew food in small garden plots supplementing a rich diet from hunting and gathering. Archaeologists seldom see more than three houses at excavations or surveys, so it appears that villages were not a necessary or practical part of Hopewell life. The Hopewell people made excellent use of the rich environment of central and southern Ohio enabling them to build the largest, most complex earthworks in North America. Hardwood forests of oak and hickory covered the riverbanks and portions of the floodplain. A few isolated prairies may have existed, kept open by repeated purposeful fires as hunting grounds to attract wildlife. For the native peoples who inhabited this part of Ohio, the Scioto River Valley was the best of all worlds, combining plants and animals found in the forest with those found in the grasslands. With its protective hills and slopes, the Chillicothe area shelters some plants which would normally be found a hundred miles further north or south. Though they never attained large population densities, somehow the Hopewell mobilized workforces large enough to move thousands of tons of earth. They displayed an amazing ability to communicate and organize on a massive scale and build mile after mile of embankment walls, moat-like depressions, mounds, and ceremonial passageways flanked by earthen berms. The culture had several major centers, one was on both sides of the Ohio River at Portsmouth. Today, only a small fraction of that complex of earthworks remains. Another focal point was within the present city of Newark, just east of Columbus. 
There, the Hopewell constructed several large geometric figures and connected them with miles of parallel embankments. The center of the Hopewell heartland was the Scioto River Valley around Chillicothe. The Hopewell constructed two dozen major enclosures in the shapes of squares, circles, and octagons. Yet their influence reached even farther, eventually spreading across much of North America's eastern woodlands. Amazingly, all of this occurred before the introduction of corn and large-scale agriculture, and in a culture that had neither towns nor villages. But they did have ideas, big ideas, and advanced understandings of geometry and astronomy to carry them out. Equally important, the Hopewell had the will and the engineering ability to turn ideas into earthworks moving Earth on a scale never before seen in North America. Hopewell Culture National Historical Park preserves and protects five of the most significant sites in the Scioto River Valley drainage. Using wooden digging sticks, stone hoes, freshwater clamshells, and baskets, the Hopewell shaped the Earth to their liking. Windows to the past the earthworks allow us to peer back into their world. At Sipe Earthworks, a two mile long wall enclosed over 120 acres of what was most likely an immense ceremonial complex. As if designed by a single architect or following unwritten rules of Hopewell architecture, the Sipe complex bears a striking similarity to other earthworks in the region. Like many earthworks, two centuries of plowing have flattened the profiles of most walls. But Sipe's steep-sided central mound defied plowing. Archaeologists excavated Sipe Mound in the 1920s and unearthed finely crafted art made of exotic materials, some brought in from distant locations. After excavation, the enormous central mound was completely reconstructed. Hopewell Mound Group is the archaeological type site, the signature earthwork example after which these people are named. Owned by a Chillicothe farmer, Mordecai Hopewell, it was excavated in the 1890s. Hopewell Mound Group includes the Hopewell's largest single mound a 500-foot-long ridge that required at least 1.5 million baskets of earth to construct. The complex was ringed by a two-mile-long wall, creating the largest single earthen enclosure they ever built. A long, six-foot-high section of this ancient wall still exists on the upper terrace. Hopeton Earthworks was constructed about the same time as Mound City across the Scioto River. Hopeton's rounded rectangle had walls 12 feet high and was built adjacent to a circle, a pattern repeated at many Hopewell sites. Though still visible in 1930s aerial photographs, decades of continued plowing reduced Hopeton's impressive walls to barely visible undulations on the landscape. Highback Works contains a circle that is the same size as at four other sites. The highback layout and alignments are strikingly similar to the Newark complex, almost 60 miles to the north. We do know that Mound City was a very special place, even in the midst of the impressive array of earthworks. It is one of the oldest Hopewell earthworks. Yet, it is also one of the last to be used. Though smaller and less precise in its geometry than other Hopewell sites, Mound City contains a greater concentration of mounds than any other earthwork. 
Artifacts discovered at Mound City are a revealing look into the lives of the Hopewell people. As grand as each site seems on a human scale, they are still only part of a much, much larger picture that traverses both time and distance. In the Scioto River Valley, five particular earthwork complexes, including Sipe, share the same design elements and dimensions. A small circle, a large circle, and a square. The geometry of the sites may also reflect their use. Archaeologists discovered that burial mounds were always placed in the large circle, never in the small circle or square. In the 1840s, two amateur archaeologists, Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis, mapped the squares of these five complexes. They discovered that each wall was the same length and each square enclosed 27 acres. Was there a special underlying significance behind the Hopewell unit of measurement? And if so, what was it? Only in the last few decades have researchers deciphered a part of the underlying repeated patterns of Hopewell architecture, the mathematical and astronomical relationships revealed in the geometry of sculpted Earth. The great squares and circles did not just stand alone, but followed a common Hopewell pattern of Earth architecture. The square nests perfectly inside the great circle. Another standard of measurement applied to smaller circles. The same diameters appeared in several sites, even those separated by many miles. High Bank Works contains a circle the same size as circles at Hopeton, Circleville, Seal, and Newark complexes. Newark Earthworks and High Bank Works are huge complexes sharing an octagonal design and exactly the same size circles, even though they are over 60 miles apart. Like many early peoples, the Hopewell were sky watchers, and astronomy appears to have played a role in their beliefs. It is impossible to read the minds and gauge the intentions of Hopewell architects, but statistical analysis and reoccurring astronomical alignments at separate sites suggest that many geometric enclosures were used as calendars. The Hopewell paid homage to the sky by moving thousands of tons of earth. Perhaps the most elusive question is why? Why did these people invest so much time and energy in constructing such impressive earthworks? We know that these complexes were not walled villages. There is little evidence that anyone lived in them. If anything, sections of the complexes may have been more like plazas, churches, observatories, or cemeteries. They appear to have been destinations or gathering places. Like Jerusalem or Mecca in the Middle East, the earthworks may have drawn travelers from great distances for spiritual pilgrimages. Because of astronomical alignments, we know that certain sites tracked movements of the sun or the moon. One speculation is that ceremonies might be timed to such alignments and that the sky was an integral part of their religion or their view of the world. Like the great cathedrals of Europe, they may have been created to convey religious inspiration. Gothic architects built cathedrals ever higher, but Hopewell architects and engineers built out, enclosing phenomenal acreages. No matter what the original purpose, the huge geometric enclosures must have inspired awe then, as they do now. The Hopewell people left much more than earthworks. Beneath the surface of the mounds are links to the past. Copper from the southern shore of Lake Superior. Silver from east central Canada. 
obsidian from the Yellowstone region of Wyoming, mica from the Blue Ridge Mountains, and from the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, shells. It would seem that Hopewell trade and influence extended across the eastern half of North America. But trade alone may not have accounted for all of the exotic materials found in the archaeological record. Instead of trading for obsidian, metals, or shells, the Hopewell conducted expeditions to distant lands and through possibly hostile territories to get what they valued. The Hopewell were skilled artisans, replicating the natural world in everyday objects such as pottery and for ceremonial uses such as smoking pipes. Elaborate designs were cut into pounded plates of copper. Mica was worked by artisans into exquisite, delicate shapes. One of the most intriguing mysteries is why did it end? What happened? By 500 AD, the Hopewell culture lasted some 700 years, but mounds and earthworks were no longer being built. When the Roman Empire fell, the Romans did not die off or move away. Most likely, the Hopewell also remained, but now, like the Romans, they changed the way they did things. They did not just disappear, and their descendants walk among us today. For many tribes, these are sacred sites. Sadly, we have lost most traces of this intriguing story. 90% of the picture has been destroyed by farming, looting, and the constant expansion of our highways and cities. Earthworks that had survived for over 2,000 years have been virtually eliminated within the last 150 years. Hopewell Culture National Historical Park is a vital piece in the jigsaw puzzle of our past, protecting and preserving key remnants of this once vibrant culture. We may never know all the answers to the many mysteries the Hopewell left behind. Yet here, we find a tantalizing glimpse into a lifestyle that influenced developments across the eastern half of the continent. A way of life that resulted in monuments of earth that challenged the imagination. That is why Hopewell Culture National Historical Park and other remaining sites deserve protection. These places are the remaining tangible links with the prehistoric residents of this land. The fog of time and mystery remain, but places like these help us see a little more clearly into the past and into the lives of these ancient architects.